Motor vehicles come in a huge variety of shapes and designs, each tailored for a specific purpose. Whether that be simply getting you from A to B in comfort and safety, traveling around a well-paved racetrack in the shortest time possible, crossing difficult terrain, or just sliding around a corner in style. Each have been carefully crafted by their engineers to excel in their disciplines. Last month, Ubisoft invited me to the Red Bull Ring in Austria to drive four incredibly different vehicles. The KTM Crossbow, an ultra lightweight track car driven by a professional driver, an off-road buggy, a Land Rover Defender and a Porsche Cayman S driven by a complete idiot. All this to get a better idea of how these vastly different vehicles perform in real life and to discuss with the programmers of Ubisoft's new game, The Crew 2, about their process for programming their vehicles, how to behave in-game. So my name is Stefan Jankowski and I'm producer at Ivory Tower, a Ubisoft studio. I'm the crew too, obviously. Speaking with Stefan, I started to get a much better idea of the relationship between real-world physics and in-game physics, and just how developers program vastly different vehicles like these to perform like their real-life counterparts. Unlike real life, where boy racers love to destroy their cars with modifications that negatively affect performance, the in-game engine separates the physics model from the 3D model. When we do the 3D model, uh, that's one part of the vehicle, and then we have the pure physics model that is completely uh, separate from the 3D. The physics model creates a model where things like the wheels are independent physics objects with their own friction and mass modeled. The separate 3D model allows the developer to pick and choose what cosmetic changes to the vehicle affect performance. For example, spoilers are not treated as aerodynamic surfaces in the Crew 2, so your inner idiot can apply spoilers on front wheel drive cars to your heart's content. One of the few cosmetic features in-game that does affect performance of the vehicle is the suspension. Suspensions are a system of springs, shock absorbers and linkages that connect the vehicle body to its wheels, with the goal of keeping the tyres in contact with the ground while minimising the transfer of that motion to the vehicle body. This provides comfort for the passengers of the vehicle, not much of a concern for a video game, but they also determine how the vehicle will handle bumps and corners. Off-road vehicles have incredibly soft suspension. This allows them to run over rugged terrain at high speed without transferring too much force to the body of the vehicle, but with one significant drawback. While cornering or driving over slanted ground, a large amount of the weight of the vehicle is shifted onto one side of the car. With suspension this soft, the vehicle is extremely susceptible to roll, as the body is fairly free to tilt upon the wheels. Combine that with a fairly high centre of mass and it's a disaster waiting to happen especially when you put an attention-seeking Australian vlogger in the driving seat. And while you can't roll over your vehicle in-game, as the physics engine applies a torque to the car when it rolls too far, but it does allow enough roll for the suspension model to behave realistically, which feeds into the traction physics model. Cars designed for tracks will always have stiff suspensions. This helps them keep their tires in contact with the ground, ensuring traction is not lost in corners through tilting, while maintaining a consistent right height an important characteristic for vehicles like the crossbow, as its undercarriage forms a significant part of its downforce generation through its rear diffuser. It's important to maintain a low centre of gravity too, as this minimises that rolling effect we saw earlier. The one drawback of stiff suspension like this is ride comfort. I was in the passenger seat of the crossbow for a couple of laps and boy do you feel every bump. You can see the effect of suspension stiffness and weight distribution which is simulated in the physics model accurately on traction very well in game with front-engined rear-wheel drive cars like the Ford Mustang GT that is particularly easy to drift around a corner. By lifting off the accelerator and hitting the brake at the apex of a turn, the g-forces of deceleration causes the heavy front end of the vehicle to be pushed downwards, lifting the rear axle and causing the rear tyres to lose grip, thus initiating oversteering. This is a lot of fun and the penalties on speed in game are fairly minuscule, but in real life, this is something designers of racing vehicles want to avoid, as you cannot apply full power if your wheels are slipping and you lose forward velocity by sliding sideways. So most racing vehicles are mid-engine to maintain grip on the rear tires during braking and keep the suspension stiff to ensure the balance between tires is as close to the ideal as possible. 
Keeping the weight evenly distributed between the front and rear tires in corners is important because it creates a vehicle which does not over or understeer. Oversteering being drifting where the back wheels lose traction and understeering is where the front tires lose traction, diminishing the steering wheel's ability to dictate the direction of the car, allowing momentum to take over. In a race you want neither, but this is a video game, so you can adjust both your front axle grip and rear axle grip to encourage these effects. And this slider simply adjusts the coefficient of friction being applied to the tires in the in-game physics engine, which adjusts the traction force the tires can apply to the ground. Traction is one of the primary tools the developers will play around with to change the feel of the game, as this is the variable that dictates how the vehicle will interact with the road. More realistic games like simulators will do their best to model traction as realistically as possible, but may give you optional driving assistance to make the game easier. For example, at higher speeds the max steering angle will be limited to help with overtaking with clumsy thumbstick controls, leading to many cars behaving like understeering cars, where if you take corners at too high speed you will end up crashing into the barrier. But without the driving assist, the result would be pretty similar anyways. You may have just spun a few times instead, like I did when driving the Porsche with the traction control off. You just need to learn to manage your speed in corners better. Games aiming for an arcade feel may do away with this mechanic and separate traction from steering mechanics altogether, allowing you to take corners at any speed with no worry. The Crew 2 lands somewhere in the middle. It's obviously an arcade game. You can take ridiculous jumps like this in a Ford F-150 Raptor race truck at 180 km per hour and land without destroying your car, and then take a turn at 200 km an hour on a dirt track without losing lateral traction. The traction here has just been boosted to make the game easier and more fun to play. Next up, let's look at how the power of the engines are handled. Now obviously, the computer programmers do not simulate an entire engine and transmission system to determine the vehicle performance. Take this Porsche 911 GT3 RS. In this clip it does 0 to 100 km an hour in 3.2 seconds, pretty much identical to its real life counterpart, even with the nitrous boost. The programmers want the relative performance between vehicles to be relatively accurate, as it would make no sense if a Mazda RX-7 was beating a Porsche 911 GT RS in acceleration and top speed. To understand how acceleration and top speed are programmed, we first need to examine what forces are acting to slow the vehicle down. The top speed of a car is primarily dictated by the drag force acting on the vehicle, which is something we examined before in my helicopter versus car top speed video. The equation for drag force is provided by this equation, and the equation for power is simply force times velocity. By rearranging these variables we get this equation for top speed, which the physics engine uses to limit the vehicle's top speed. The programmers can adjust the top speed of each vehicle simply by adjusting its max power, coefficient of drag or frontal area. If they really wanted to they could change the air density with elevation on the map too. Adjusting the acceleration is slightly more difficult as the acceleration is determined by several factors which vary with the vehicle's speed. The primary variable that we are concerned with is the wheel torque, which varies dramatically for internal combustion engines across different engine rotation speeds and gear ratios. The force applied by the wheel to the ground, if there is no tyre slip, will vary with the torque applied divided by the wheel radius. The wheel radius is just one part of the internal gearing system that needs to be considered when calculating the force the wheels will impart on the ground. The vehicle will have several gears it can cycle through at different speeds to change the applied wheel torque and will have one permanent drive ratio that is determined by additional gearing and things like the differential. All these parameters will be programmed into the in-game vehicle and the final wheel torque will be determined by this equation, where TE is the engine torque. The engine torque varies across different revolutions per minute of the engine and we define that variation with a torque curve, like this one for the Porsche Cayman S. The programmers will again actually input the vehicle's torque curve into the vehicle parameters to ensure it performs like the real deal. Designing games like this is always a delicate balance between realism and fun. The developers don't always go for ultra realism. Programmers will often play around with their world's physics variables like lateral traction to give a more arcadey feel with exaggerated drifting or simply to make the car easier to drive around corners at high speed. Or we can just throw the rulebook out the window and switch from being a plane to a boat in mid-air. There is no real ad read here, I simply want to say thank you to Ubisoft for inviting me out to such a cool event and allowing me to chat with the programmers of the game. If you are into car video games, The Crew 2 is out now.